Okay, so I've got something for you. Tell me what you think of this. I got this, this is the title of an email that I got earlier this week, and I get it about once a week from a popular Men's Health Act magazine, and it says the following. Drop 30 pounds in 30 days. That's the title of the email. What do you think about that? What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like something that, you know, you want to jump at and click on and I want some of that? Or I think like a lot of people when I talk to them about this stuff and they, they tell me what they think about it is, they know at some level it's too good to be true. You know, 30 pounds in 30 days, it kind of almost sounds like, you know, make $50,000 a month working from your own home, you know, in less than five hours a week. You know, like, it's like a get-rich-quick scheme, you know, it's like, get skinny fast. I, I think we know, I think a lot of people know that at some level it's bullshit. You know, it's just, it's not, maybe there is a way to do that and to lose 30 pounds in 30 days, but you're probably going to gain it back. And when you gain back, that it's not going to be 30 pounds, it's going to be 40 pounds. Let me, let me tell you how that works. When people go on these crash diets and they lose a lot of weight in a short amount of time, some of it's water weight, but a lot of it is starvation. So you can work out a lot, you can just, you know, eat celery and salads, and you can drop some weight, and you're going to lose some fat for sure, but you're probably going to lose other essential parts of your body like bone and muscle. And what happens is, it's like an analogy. So let's say, you know, you've got this amount of muscle and you're like a V8 engine and you can burn all kinds of fuel. Well, you're trading, when you, when you lose weight, <clears throat> when you lose muscle mass, you're trading in your V8 engine for a four-cylinder import compact car. And so you're, you're going to lose this weight in a couple, three months, and then three months down the road, you're not going to be able to burn that much fuel, i.e. calories. You're going to have a smaller engine and what happens is, people eventually, they lose weight. You know, you're up here, you lose weight, and then you plateau out. And when you plateau out, a lot of times people get discouraged, and then they quit. And then when they start gaining weight, they gain it all back. And then because their muscle isn't there, remember, they don't have the V8 engine anymore. they got this four-cylinder thing that just can't burn as much calories. They put more weight back on. So really, 30 pounds in 30 days often turns into gaining all of that back and then maybe 40 pounds in 60 days or 120 days. You know, I think most people intuitively know that kind of a scheme or, or attention-grabbing headline is too good to be true. So, so if that's too good to be true, like, how do you do this? How do you really lose weight? I've got the answer. I'm going to tell you. It's... it's this is, this is what I've become so convinced of. This is the way to do it, okay? I want to try to boil this down and be as simple as possible and clear. The way that you, in the long term, lose weight and keep it off, stay active, live until 80 and 90, not in a wheelchair or in a nursing home, but active and hiking and playing with grandkids and doing the things you want to do and not dying young of disease. The way that you do that, this is how, are you ready for this? Is you commit to a lifestyle where you are continually, every day, trying to eat better and exercise more, more efficiently, better, whatever. So, so that's it. Where you're always trying to get better at your lifestyle, at living a healthy lifestyle, every day. So the idea that, oh, I can lose weight and then I can get to this level and I'll be there and then I'll just maintain and I'll put my feet up, it doesn't work as well as committing to this continual improvement to your lifestyle. Now that can sound overwhelming, but let's do it in a sustainable way. Let's do it one step at a time, stepwise. Take the first step that you can do and then you go with that for a while and then when you're ready, you take the next step. So for somebody who's 300 pounds, who's pretty sedentary and doesn't exercise, the first step might be, okay, go from drinking two Cokes a day to just one, and go from no exercise to walking 15 minutes a day twice a week. That's the first step. I would do that for a month, a couple weeks. And when you get that down, and you're ready to take the next step, maybe the next step is, 
okay, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to walk for 30 minutes three times a week. A little bit more the next step. And then I'm going to lift some weights. And then I'm going to jog. And then I'm going to run. And then I'm, you know, and then you can, you're ever so slowly you continue to make these improvements one step at a time. So for me, I think I'm down 16 or 17 pounds from when I started about eight months ago, ten months ago. And in the beginning, for example, for lunch, I would have two sandwiches, a big thing of chips, and milk. And the first step for me was I, I couldn't give up the chips. I knew that I needed to cut down and switch out of the sandwiches and go to fruit and vegetables and that kind of stuff, but I just couldn't get rid of it. So the first step for me was just less. So instead of taking this big pile of chips, I took half. You know, maybe six chips or something. And I stuck with that for a month, a long time. And then the next step was I added a piece of fruit. And then after a month of that, I was able to get rid of the chips altogether. Then I went from two sandwiches down to one sandwich. And now I've gotten rid of sandwiches altogether. And I'm on wraps and lettuce wraps and I'm adding beans. And, you know, like I continually am taking these steps. Same thing with exercise. So I would exercise real irregularly. So there were some weeks I'd go five and then some it was like I'd disappear out of the gym for two weeks at a time. So I would do this, the yo-yo. So my first goal was consistency. I don't care what I do, but five days a week I want to do something for 30 minutes a day. That was it. That was my goal. So I had some weights, I did some lifting, and da-da-da-da. And once I developed that habit and figured out how to work around work and having my daughter and all that stuff and figured it out, then I took the next step was, okay, I need to, I want to do cardio and resistance training every day. So I did that, took that step. One step at a time. That's how you do it. One step at a time, long term, and you commit to this continual process of stepwise improving your health. It, it, it's not 30 pounds in 30 days. There's no quick fix. You're not going to grab the Kim Kardashian, you know, weight band and wrap that around. Like, do you think that anybody who does that band thing, that the band is going to cause, is going to, is going to cause them to live longer or when they're 90 to be in better shape? I mean, that is, that is ludicrous. That's absolutely ludicrous. Now, if it's something that gets somebody excited and they eat better and they exercise more and that's part of it, okay. <laughs> but it's the diet and exercise that does it. It ain't the band. It's just frustrating to continually, the more I get into this, what really works for long-term success and I see people and I study stories and I hear what works, like the more this, these just bullshit fads and cleanses and detoxes and bands and all this stuff, it's just, it's not it, you know, it's not it, you know, you know better, your intuition knows better, trust that, you know, try what I'm saying, see if it works, you know, when you're ready to make those changes, and to do what really works for, for your long-term health, for you living long and well and staying active. And you've been through all the fads and quick fixes and you're ready to do what works, you come to me. You come to the website and we'll take care of you. That's what we do.